What I wanted to look at before we move on to some of the other bits here is some more stuff to do with invariant points because in the textbook it is very, doesn't really come up very much. Um, but I wanted to try and pick out some exam questions where it actually happens, right? Um, first of all, I'm not going to do all of these parts. I'm actually just going to do part C for this question. But I just want to talk us through what you do for these things that we've got. So we've got a matrix here, and it says show that the matrix M is non-singular. What does that actually want us to do? Find the determinant. Find the determinant. If it's non-singular, the determinant... It should not be equal to zero. Singular means no determinant. It's only by itself, so it would be zero. So we're going to hope that the determinant is not zero. And you can see clearly there that the, de the determinant is not zero. It's, it's clearly not zero because you've got four and a seven and a two and a five. They're never going to cancel to give us a zero, right? We've then got that the transformation T of the plane is represented by the matrix M. So the triangle R is transformed to the triangle S by the transformation T. In other words they're doing this matrix to this triangle to get this triangle. Given that the area of S is 63 square units, find the area of R. So are they wanting us to do the enlargement scaling up, or are they wanting us to go backwards to the object? Backwards. They want us to go backwards yeah. to the object. So you would need to be careful there. Whatever the determinant was, you would. what would you do? make sure you need to do with the determinant? Take the... Take the modulus of it, and you'll divide by the determinant to go back to the area of the original object, OK? Because this one, we're going from image to object. But this last one, I just wanted to show you because it's something that was a bit new to do with invariant points. So it says, show that the line y equals 2x is invariant under the transformation. We've already done the really hard part with invariant lines, where we just had a matrix, and we had to like find the invariant lines. This one, they've told us what the invariant line is, and we just need to show that it is invariant. So we normally would want to do 4 minus 5, 2 minus 7. I would do this to x, y if I was looking for an, an invariant point. If I wanted this to be equal to this, would be an invariant point. But they've actually told me that the invariant line is y equals 2x. So are there any suggestions about what I should do over here? Instead of y, instead of y, there would be 2x, OK? So we know that, that we can replace this with a 2x. Now, we're not going to say what it's going to be equal to, because it's not going to fix it to exactly the same points. What we're actually going to do here is we're just going to multiply this out, and we're going to see if it's invariant, OK? So when we multiply these things out, you get 4x minus 10x, and then you get 2x minus 14x, which is just minus 6x minus 12x. And we can sort of see that this is invariant here. Yeah, it's still got the same ratio of things that are happening here. Now, if you just imagine for a second, so it's saying the x coordinate is going to minus 6, multiplying by minus 6. So the x coordinate is shooting in the other direction. And the y coordinate is going to minus 12 of what it, the previous version of it. It's kind of hard to explain what I'm saying there. But they're still in that same ratio. And I think the clearest way to show that they are still invariant is to take out a common factor from here, which is minus 6x, 2x. Once you get to this line here, you can say, so the line y equals 2x is invariant. Now, if you want to think about what's actually happening here, can you give me, uh, well, I'll tell you, the coordinate that is on the line y equals x. If I just pick a coordinate, if I just pick 1, 2, what's it telling me is going to have happened to 1, 2? It's going down the line. Where's it going to end up? Good. It goes to minus 6, minus 12. And if I had a point here, 
it would get scaled if I had the point which is 2, 4. It would go to minus 12, minus 24. Sorry, that should say minus 12, shouldn't it? So all of these points up here are refle not reflected. They are kind of going through. I guess the way I think about this is that this point is going through a negative enlargement through the, through the center, and the scale factor is minus 6. So all of these points here are coming out, and they're like shooting off down the other side. And likewise, lots of these points here are going in that direction. But they are still, still all invariant. So if you ever get asked to show that a particular line is invariant, we don't need to do that really long, quite challenging process that we did previously. We can actually just apply the transformation to the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate in terms of x, and then hopefully we can show that it's still a, a factor of that particular thing for it to be invariant. So okay. Would, the, um, like, would it be a way from, to go from six, uh, minus 6, minus 12, to 1, and minus 2? Yeah, what do you think? Would you do that the inverse of the matrix? Exactly what you would do. If you wanted to find out what transformation would take you from this coordinate to this coordinate, you would multiply it by this. And that is what we're doing in like exercise E. It's like, you've done the transformation, I want to go backwards, you just do inverse. So I'm really, really impressed when people sort of think of these things because we've built up our understanding of matrices to such a point now where we, we know how they behave and how they work rather than what to do. And there's a slight, there's a real subtle difference between like how something works and knowing like what you have to do, yeah? Good Naima Noshin of 11R. So, Please come now to the school office. Naima Noshin of 11R. Um, yeah, what I was just on the back of saying that, it's a bit like if you knew, if you know how to like, how to fix a computer versus like how, what all the things inside a computer are actually doing. Like obviously as mathematicians, we want to be able to know like how everything works rather than just how to fix something or like how to do something. So yeah, try and ask as many questions like that as possible because tell you what, like half the time I won't probably have an answer for it. And it means that's, you know, that's interesting and, and how we should be thinking as much as possible. So what we'll do today, we'll do combined transformations. And I imagine, as well as a bit more invariant points, we will probably be able to do some linear transformations in three dimensions as well. But there's nothing conceptual I think you're going to find that difficult. It looks difficult, but it's not. And then we'll probably in the next lesson do the inverse transformations. But we already know how to do it because, well, it just makes sense to do the opposite of what we had there. OK. So let's have a quick look at combined transformations. So let's just read through this. It says, we know that for a position vector x and a matrix A representing some transformation, then AX is the transformed point. That sounds like quite posh language, but it's basically just saying a position vector X is just going to be like a coordinate like X, Y, and a particular matrix might be something like A, B, C, D. We know that when you multiply them, you get A, B, C, D, X, Y, and you get AX plus B, Y, C, X plus D, Y, like that. That's all it's saying, okay? So if we wanted to apply a transformation represented by a matrix A followed by another represented by B, what transformation matrix do we use to represent the combined transformation? And you have to think carefully about the order of things. So if I wanted to do A first, then B, what would it look like? Would it look like this or would it look like this? It would be the second one. Why would it be the second one? Yeah, because this is the thing. We know with matrix multiplication that we that it does matter about the order of things that you have. And this thing is being applied first of all. And actually to do the transformation, you'll have noticed we've always been trans we've been doing the matrix before the position vector. So in this particular case, the one that we would be doing is this. Okay. Oh, and it actually I know it says it on the board anyway, but it says this is because to apply the effect of A followed by B, we have this particular thing, B, A, X, which is actually the same thing if you wanted to, instead of just applying A and then applying B, you could do B times A and then apply that to X. Um, and the reason that we're allowed to do that is because matrix multiplication is this word that we have called associative. There was a similar word to associative that we've used previously. Does anybody remember what it was? Commutative. commutative. What did commutative mean, Haroon? Yeah, it was about order. Like three times five is the same as five times three. 
Yeah, now associative is if you have something like 2 times 3 times 5, is this the same as this? Which for multiplication with numbers, it is associative, right? Um, so that's the process of associativity, and it says it down here. Um, a binary operator, and with this, this symbol here, this circle with a cross through it, is basically a made-up symbol that could mean anything. It could mean divide, it could mean add five and then divide by itself. It's just like a symbol that can represent something. A binary operator is associative if A operator B operator C is the same as A operator B operator C. So it's just the same thing I've been saying up here with the numbers. But this is the kind of language you'll use when you're at university, when you're really trying to rigorously prove something. Um, so the order in which you multiply them doesn't matter. And it says here, addition on real numbers is associative, so you can just think about why these things are true. But subtraction and division are not associative. You can just think about these examples. If you move where the brackets are, the bit that you do first actually does matter for particular operations. But for matrices, it is associative. So this is the only thing that people ever get wrong here. Even though you're doing A and then B, the way that you write it, because of the way we write this going backwards, is it's going to be B, A, because you do the A first and then the B part that you've got there, right? So let's actually just dive in and try and think about what this might actually look like. It says represent as a single matrix, the transformation representing a reflection in the line Y equals X, followed by a stretch on the X axis by a factor of four. So the one I think about doing first, I'm going to say a reflection in the line Y equals X. I'm going to call that one A and then a stretch on the X axis by a factor of four. I'm going to call that one B. It doesn't matter, you can call, I don't care what you call them, but I just want to name them something because it might make this next stage a bit easier. So what is the matrix that's going to represent a reflection in the line y equals x? What would you recommend me doing? The drawing them. Okay, so what I think I used blue as I hat. So we've got I hat here. And we've got J hat here. If it's a reflection, what happens to these? They swap. So we get I hat j hat, which means that we should be able to construct the matrix. 0, 1, 1, 2. Zero, one, one zero. Now if we think about the B one, it says a stretch on the x-axis by a factor of 4. So i is the only one that's going to change here, and it's going to stretch all the way out, obviously, to 4i. Uh, don't forget for me to underline that. And then we've got j. So when we want to do that stretch, our B should say what? Uh, four, zero. Four, zero, and zero, one. zero, one. So if we want to find out a single matrix that does both of them, we need to do A, B, or B, A? B, A. So we just need to find out that the single matrix B, A will be four, zero, zero, one, and then zero, one, one, zero. And then when we multiply these together, we get, um, what should we get up here? Um, zero. Yep. Four. Uh, one now I'm going to do something here. I'm going to draw this out. So I hat has become zero, one. So I hat looks like this. And J hat has become four, zero. So this is what J hat has become. So it looks like you can see what's happening. If this is what it looked like originally, it has flipped. So it's flipped there and this one has stretched. And we can see that that happens because of the order. What do you think I could do if I wanted to find out if the order of these transformations actually mattered? Good, I could try and find out what AB is. Now, I f some people can just do this stuff in their head. They can just imagine these transformations. But imagine the transformations were really, really confusing. This is a way of us actually deciding, does it matter about the order? So this is not part of the question. But if I did AB, which is 0, 1, 1, 0, 4, 0, 0, 1, we get... You get 0, 1... 4, 0. So it's different. Okay? 
what it actually changes. This means that they are not the same way of doing the transformations. And I guess you probably could have thought about that yourself. If you stretch it first and then flip it, this blue line is obviously going to be a lot longer and the red line is going to be shorter. And you can see that revealed in, in this that we've got written. We got that right? Yeah, we did. OK, so I'm not going to include that one here on our notes. But it's kind of fun to decide, does it matter about the order of the transformations? Let's have a look. Represent as a single matrix transformation representing a rotation of 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the point naught naught, followed by a reflection in the line y equals x. OK, this one, I think we should try doing this one. Shall we try and do this one without the matrices and then see if we got it right with the matrices? So first of all, I'm going to try it with just uh, this is because it, it should work, right? If this is i hat and this is j hat, the first transformation it wants us to do is a rotation. So the blue one is going to be pointing and the red one. OK. Now, if it's going to reflect in the line y equals x, what is going to happen? Where's the blue one going to be pointing? The blue one in the line y equals x? Right. The blue one is going to be pointing to the right. And the red one is going to be pointing down. So what is the matrix that represents those two transformations? Um, What's happened to i hat? One. Oh, one, zero. one, zero. It hasn't changed. And then, zero minus one. and then zero minus one. From the original. Matrix. From the original. We're saying, how has i hat changed? i hat has stayed the same. j hat has gone down. So this is what we think the answer is, right? Yeah. And I've actually said here, what single transformation is this? What have we done to go from there to there? Might be helpful, actually, if I, if I do it out underneath here. We've got that and that. This is the start. And this is final. What's the single transformation that takes me? Good. It's a reflection in the x-axis. So this is also interesting because multiple transformations can combine to be written as a single transformation. It's just kind of interesting to think about what they might be. Now, we did that the visual way. You probably, might, you probably won't be getting a question that's super visual, but there's no reason why that's wrong. It doesn't, unless it says use matrix multiplications. You know, it's perfectly fine the way we've just done it there to come up with it. But let's actually come up with the two different things. So first of all, our A matrix, which represents the rotation. Now, being careful of which one we said the rotation is. What is the A matrix? Arafal, have you got an idea of what represents this rotation matrix for I hat, J hat? What has I become? For the just, we're just doing the first thing, which is the, the rotation. So we're talking about this one and this one, because that was the rotation, wasn't it? Good. And Tamin, what about the, the B transformation? Oh, the B transformation, though, is a reflection in the line Y equals X. So I guess we'd have to do that separately, wouldn't we? Um, let's do a, a Y equals X. Do you remember what happens in a y equals x? If this is i hat and this is j hat, what happens when you do a y equals x reflection? They, they flip and they switch <coughs> places. So what would the b matrix be? Pardon? We're just saying this is what would be the transformation of a reflection in the line y equals x of i hat and j hat. We're doing it as a completely separate transformation. We're not doing it combined. We're going to multiply them to combine them afterwards. Or would it be 0, 1, 1, 0? It would be 0, 1, 1, 0. It's a shame I can't write. 0, 1, 1, 0. Yeah? I know all these diagrams are a bit confusing because I've written them for different bits. These were the combined transformations. These are the separate transformations. So if I want to put them back together, we know we'd have to do them in the reverse order. So you've got 0, 1, 1, 0, multiplied by 0, minus 1, 1, 0. Now I'm really hoping we end up with 1, 0, 0, minus 1, do we? Um, yes. 1, 0, 0, minus 1. So just because there's one way of doing things doesn't mean we always have to do it that way. So I guess I should kind of 
say like, that's one way of doing the question. This way was a way of doing it, of like building it up by doing the transformations one by one, okay? Is there another example before we do an exercise? So there's an exam question one. Oh yeah, okay, I'll tell you what, why don't you guys just start doing the exam question one? I'm sure you can do that now. Notice how the marks are like one, 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 two, two, like really short questions, okay? So they're just careful consideration of what these things look like. I might start doing some of it on the board myself if you get stuck. Do you think you could have done that in your head? Do you think you could have done rotation 90 degrees and then a reflection in the line y equals minus x? Yeah, you can, can't you? Joe goes back to where it's supposed to be and i is flipped, so it was a reflection in the y-axis. Cool, so I'll show you what the mark scheme looks like. Nothing exciting. It's literally just the answers to these questions. As long as you get um, 
Oh, it didn't. I did this. I didn't do part C, did I? Oh, oh I. I did part C, and that's part C, and then that's part D yeah, there. I just guessed what they were going to ask. Yeah. So I'll leave those answers up on the board, not the mark scheme, because the mark scheme is, is pretty dry. So I'm actually going to get rid of the mark scheme. We're going to look at exercise 7D, and I'll pick out some questions for us to do now, and then we'll finish.